All right. So uh, the way we're going to try to do this is um, I've got a I've got a, a device here. This is an Android phone, but this will work on an iPhone, Android, iPad, basically everything. And I've got my my phone plugged in, and uh, whatever I do on the screen of my uh, phone, it should then show up on my screen here. Although it'll be slower. And as usual, I'm recording this or trying to record this so that you can see what I'm doing on my screen and also um, you can replay it later. So make, we'll make some notes, then we'll get started. Uh, as usual, these notes, I'm going to put them in the network folder. And by the end of the day, you should uh, be able to access them so that you can um, catch up on what I, what I said. Okay, so for today we're going to do Instagram. It was founded probably in around 2011 or 12, somewhere around there. I forgot to look it up. So founded in 2011 or so uh, was iOS only at first. So the first several months you could only get on Instagram if you had an iPhone. And so to pull out my hipster card, I was on Instagram week one, the week it was released, uh, before any of you even heard of it. So uh, it was out there for a while uh, as an iPhone-only app. It got very, very popular. And then eventually the company released an Android version. So now available for iOS, which is iPhones and iPads. Android, which is, you know, Samsung and LG and all of those, and also Windows, but it's on devices, so mobile devices and such. Yes? So, is it forced to get the Android before you have Wi-Fi? Well, that's, some, that's something we're, we're going to get to, but oh, okay. I don't know if they were forced to go to Android. Most likely that was their strategy to first start off on a smaller ecosystem uh, and get the popularity and the buzz on iOS and then when other people say hey what about me why, why can't I use it and has it got more buzz worthy then when it got on Android with more people to use it then more people ran to it <laughs> oh, Facebook actually so but on devices available on all but on devices doesn't work so well on you know, desktop or laptop. I will show a super secret trick that you can actually kind of use it on a laptop or desktop. Although really, it's kind of technical, but again, I'll show you how to do it. But the best way is on a real, uh, on a device, on a mobile device. Um, so eventually, maybe a year later, so around I don't, I don't know if it was a whole year later, but let's say a year later, around 2012, uh, opened up to Android and then Windows devices. And then uh, probably also around 2012, bought by Facebook for for a little bit of money. Facebook bought it for a few billion dollars. It, it was at least a billion dollars. It might have been more. I've heard of so many billion dollar acquisitions now that they're all mixed up in my head. But I remember, uh, yeah, like Microsoft bought LinkedIn like for $10 billion. And um, Facebook bought Instagram for like a billion or like two billion or something. You know, they've got the money for it. So they bought, they bought, Facebook bought Instagram before it was super popular. Just like if you know anything about uh, the stock market, what's the mantra of investing in the stock market? Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. So you buy stocks at a low value, and then when they get popular or valuable, then you sell them at a high value, you made money. Insta or Facebook did that with Instagram. They bought it when it had low users, but very high popularity. They bought it at that point, and now it's worth so much more to them. Uh, Facebook... Uh, as we've spoken recently, has reached, has crossed the 2 billion user mark. But 
Instagram, what they bought, it's at about 500 million now. So obviously at a certain point, let's say uh, Instagram early on had like 5 million users in 2017, 500 million, so half a billion. It's one of the networks that has exploded. The other one, of course, is Facebook, but that's like such a runaway train. Um, I don't think growth really is going to stop that much. And every few years, there's this Facebook killer. There's a new social network out there that's going to be better than Facebook, and it hasn't happened. They've been saying that for five, six years. Facebook's been around like 12 years. So every other network, uh, just user base, and also in clout, uh, pales in comparison. And this is what I'm saying, unfortunate... Oh, I thought I saw a little pop-up here. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes we might see a pop-up that says connection lost. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen too often. But um, Instagram, uh, very popular, 500 million users. Uh, nowadays, Instagram is uh, integrated with Facebook. Facebook left Instagram alone for a long time. They let them keep growing. They bought them, but they pretty much let them grow for a while. As I said, I was using Instagram from the first week that it was published, which was sometime in October, I think 2011. And I was using it for the year or so, and then uh, the news came out, Facebook bought them. Now, as I've said before, I'm not a fan of Facebook, and I haven't been a fan of Facebook in a while. 2011. So when I heard Facebook's going to buy my favorite network, Instagram, I was almost going to close my account. Uh, although I did join in on what everyone had posted, RIP Instagram. So I didn't delete it, but then for a little while I kind of didn't have the, the, you know, the, the taste to use it like I used to because I know that a big company like Facebook, the, the, their whole purpose, it's the purpose of all of these networks really is not for you for them to provide you a service where you can connect with your friends and family. The purpose of all of these social networks really is to market to you, to get you into their service so that they can show you ads. And they make money by showing you ads. Now from, <clears throat> from a consumer point of view, I don't like that, but from a business point of view, I love that. I want my product to be shown to the right people. So I kind of myself want to have it both ways. I don't want to use and be bombarded by ads by using these networks, but I want to use these networks as a business to engage in some ads. Instagram, <clears throat> we all thought it's going to be the same thing. Once Facebook buys it, they're going to impose their Facebook culture and will upon Instagram and change it from what we had as our own little sort of hipster enclave. But they left it alone for a while, for like three years or so. And it wasn't until very recently, maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, that now Facebook started to exert their, their, their will more upon Facebook. And the result of that is that now there's a lot of this integration between Facebook and Instagram. So for example, you can uh, place a Facebook ad, right? We talked about Facebook boosted posts, Facebook boosted posts. Place a Facebook ad, and it automatically goes to Instagram for free. So the amount of money that we paid on Facebook, a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever we paid on Facebook to show our ad to more people, it can go automatically and for free to Instagram and reach people on Instagram as well. Yes. I don't understand right. why, so Windows and Microsoft is not for desktop and laptop. Uh, Microsoft Windows 10 does work on desktops, laptops, and mobile devices. Microsoft was trying to make a system that will work on all devices. So you can uh, get Instagram for Windows phones. I have a Windows phone. It's not my main phone, but there are Windows for all devices now. <clears throat> so, um, one good thing again is if you're going to engage in, in marketing and in, in boosting posts on Facebook or Instagram or, or etc., 
<clears throat> at least with Facebook and Instagram, with the same money that you spend, it targets both networks. <clears throat> Facebook, uh, Instagram attributes. Share a photo. Share a video. Share a story. <clears throat> you might have heard of the story of the word story. Uh, have you heard of, of that term story in any other social network? Snapchat. Snapchat uses this concept of a story, which we'll talk about what it is exactly. Uh, but this is one of the things, one of the complaints about social networks nowadays. Uh, a social network comes out, it has something unique, it has something different than the competition. People then log into it and join up and such. Then the social network creators realize we're not going to be able to be as popular as some of these other networks. So these networks then start to copy each other. Twitter <clears throat> still has the 140 character limit, which is one of the very few things I think that really separates it from every other network nowadays. The, your Instagram homepage looks kind of similar to your Facebook homepage. Your Google Plus content of sharing pictures and video is pretty much the same as Facebook. Now your Instagram usage, creating stories, is the same as Snapchat. So all of these networks are becoming so similar, kind of boring, because the 800-pound gorilla of Facebook it got so popular that everyone wants to be popular like Facebook, so everyone's copying Facebook or each other. So, photo. Traditionally, a square photo with a hipster filter. So, this was its big selling point in the beginning. Square photos. Traditionally, when we took photos with film, it was horizontal or vertical. There was also a way in the old days to take a photo that was like a square. Anyone remember what that was? Polaroids. Polaroid photos were squares. You take the photo, you get the photo right away, it develops in your hand, but it's a little square. So what would also happen, do you remember as we used to use film, what was the big problem in using film besides waiting for it to get developed? What might happen as you take the photos? You overexpose it, you cover it with your thumb on accident, maybe you accidentally open up the back and you say, whoops, I have film in it. So there were these problems with the film itself, that it could get damaged, the film could have expired, all of these weird things would happen to your photos. And then when we picked it up at Walgreens, we said, I don't want this one, and you don't pay for the one that was, that was bad, right? Well, this, these were two things that Instagram did on purpose. Square photos, which were different than the ones we were used to, horizontal, and it would then get weird special effects on the photo. It would look overexposed. It would look like it has a shadow on the corner from your thumb. It would look like it had scratches. It would purposely try to look weird or classic because by the time in 2011, most likely everyone had a, a smartphone and everyone could take pretty good photos with these. I didn't like the photo, I deleted and I try again to get the perfect photo. So the original culture of, or style of Instagram was to purposely take weird photos. And it worked. Hundreds of millions of people signed up. They got very popular. You saw lots of photos of people's breakfast with an artistic filter in a little <laughs> square shape. And then businesses got on board too. People saw, businesses saw, there's more people getting on Instagram, younger people getting on Instagram. I want to reach that audience. Our business will get on Instagram. That was traditionally. Nowadays, you can do a wide photo, or we can say a normal photo. You can do a you can do a wide photo, no filter. So again, it's I believe it's losing its original style. Originally, you needed to make it a square, and you put a filter. Now, because all the networks are copying from each other, now you can do a wide photo if you want. You don't have to do a filter. 
So it's almost like, what's the point? What was the uniqueness of Instagram? Now you don't have to do it. Yes? Can you show us some examples of this kind of topic? I will once we get into the, the network. So the other thing uh, sharing video. Now, does anyone know or remember the network called Vine? Yes. Vine was a network created, it was independent, and then Twitter bought them. So, a little digression here. Vine was a short attention span video social network probably lasted like three or four years. Short attention span means six seconds. You could upload a maximum of length of a video of six seconds to Vine. There was a social network where you can subscribe, where you can comment, where you can like, like in any other network, but it focused on six second videos. And when I heard it in the beginning, I thought, what can you do in six seconds? But there were so many creative people that made such amazing uh, videos in such a short time. They knew they had this short little limit, so what was popular was the video was, was made in such a way that it then looped back to the beginning, so it looked like it was continuous over and over. There were some examples of uh, uh, people... Uh, there was one where there, where there was a group of actors that were making a video six seconds at a time. They, they had, you know, like a half an hour movie that they would be releasing every day for six seconds. And this network, I really liked it. It was interesting and creative and it was a challenge. And then in the beginning of this year, uh, they shut it down. So Vine doesn't quite work anymore. It doesn't exist. So when, when Vine came out, then Instagram got the great idea to do short videos. So you can share video, again traditionally, square video with a filter, 15 seconds. They say, you guys do it for 6 seconds, we'll do it for 15 seconds. That's our big innovation. So, uh, also square video, like, you know, really, really old, I guess like 60 millimeter film. Um, because then, after you vanquish your foes, nowadays, uh, nowadays, uh, regular, regular dimensions, so rectangular, no filter, How many seconds up are to two minutes. Um, not the live, but the Snapchat one on Facebook, how long does that one have 30 seconds? Uh, I'd have to look it up at the moment. I'm not so sure. I don't. I don't do a lot of Facebook uh, video. I usually uh, focus on other networks. But it's one thing that I, you know, I want to have. I want to look that up. So I don't quite know. But I think pretty short also, because one of the big problems with doing video on most of these networks is you can record a huge video, but then we've got to upload it, and I'm going to use up all my data from AT and T and my minutes or whatever. And now that I finally have an unlimited plan, now I can upload my videos. So in the beginning, yeah, 6 seconds, 15, probably 30 seconds or so, but nowadays they're getting longer. So I think it's about 2 minutes. They still kind of shorten it a little bit. I think it's up to 2 minutes, maybe 1 minute, um, that you can upload video length to Instagram. And now we've got... Oh, wait, before story, one more thing, two more things. Uh, share a boomerang or a, what do you call it, collage, composition, we'll see in a moment, collage. You could then also eventually, besides regular photos, you could share a boomerang or a collage. Uh, a boomerang is a looping, a short looping, no sound, animation, like an animated GIF, or GIF, if you want to say it wrong, an animated GIF that j just repeats. Uh, it's a little recording, a few seconds long, of something happening, it then loops, or, or 
goes backwards, right? Like the movement, the person walks forward and then they walk backward, forward and back, forward and backward. It's a boomerang. It has no, it has no sound. It's, it's short, just a few seconds. And then the collage, I, I don't think that's the name of it, but I'm blanking on it at the moment, a collection of one to three photos in one image. So a collage. You, you put two photos up here and then one photo down here. It's a little collage, a little square or rectangle where you put little photos together with a little simple white border. That was very popular because people would have to go to a different app to make their collage. Then they would bring it into Instagram. Instagram then said, okay, we can do that ourselves. So then in Instagram, then you could create a collage and share a photo of three photos at once. Um, and then share a story, a collection of photos, videos, or boomerangs, and or boomerangs. That last 24 hours. Like Snapchat. The big idea with Snapchat, which is one of the networks we'll cover next month for part three, is the big their differentiator in Snapchat is okay, kids come to our network because share your embarrassing stuff and it'll disappear in 24 hours. Your parents will never see you. <laughs> or uh, you know, 20 year olds send these sexy messages to each other and don't worry, it'll disappear in 24 hours. So that was the big thing for Snapchat, their big differentiator. Share photos, share video, share graphics, whatever, and then in 24 hours it disappears, so there's no proof. Which there still is, because it's in their server, and a person can copy their phone screen and all of that, so it's not as secure as people think it is. But Snapchat had 24-hour self-destructing messages, and in the beginning people thought, why would this be valuable? My content that I'm putting out there would disappear? How can a person watch it again? Well, that wasn't the point. The point was, let's share with our friends, away from our, from the grown-ups, something in secret for us only that then disappears in 24 hours. Um, Instagram, parent company Facebook, they said, that's a good idea. We're going to do that too. So now Instagram has the ability to uh, have these disappearing uh, pieces of content that in 24 hours it goes away. Personally, I don't like Snapchat and the 24-hour stories of Instagram for business for business and marketing, I think it's a big challenge because in every other network, I can log in and see my stats and see this photo did well for my business. This link did well for my business. This one didn't. I can look up these stats and I can then decide and plan on what to do in the future. Snapchat and Instagram stories, they disappear in 24 hours. And if you didn't check your stats in 24 hours, they're gone. So you don't know how it works. You don't know that time and effort that you spent if it was worth it because you forgot to check 24 in 24 hours. And if you check in three hours, there's still 21 hours that it could be getting more viral or whatever. So you have to set an alarm 23 hours from the moment you, you publish your snap on Snapchat or your story on Instagram to see the stats or else they disappear. They will probably fix that, that you will be able to go back and see your stats on expired stories or snaps. But at the moment, it's not there, and it's one of the reasons that I think it's annoying for a business. For personal, it's great. Share fun little things to friends and family. But for a business, it's, it's annoying. So there's many things that are common in this network that are common to the other networks. And now story is one of the ones that is now being shared over at um, Snapchat. And I think even Facebook, normal Facebook, is also having a version of stories. They're all copying from each other now. So what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll look at, in general, we'll look at um, We'll look at Instagram in general, then we'll do it. We'll, we'll set it up. As I said, um, you, we want to do it on a real device, but before we do that, we, we can kind of get a little preview of it on the web. So go ahead and open up your web browser.
You go to Instagram.com. Well, for the moment, we're going to do it on the desktop, and then we'll do it on the device. What? You want us to do it on the desktop? Yes, again, for the moment, we'll do it on the desktop, and then we'll do it on the device. <laughs> so, uh, let's go to Instagram.com here uh, on this home page. Uh, it shows you, well, you can either log in with Facebook, or you can um, sign up to create an account or download the app. Uh, so I show you the, the website of Instagram because there are, this is the spot where you're going to see also uh, their blog, and their support about us and such. Most websites, most social networks have a blog, which I highly recommend you, you, you read. If you, like, if you see that, you really like Twitter. Twitter has the official company blog the official company website where you can keep up to date with what's happening on Twitter. What are the latest uh, features? Instagram has it also. Blog.instagram.com. Just go there. And this will keep you up to date with new features, um, inspiration, <coughs> photos, and all of that. But the home page here, there's not really much to do unless we sign in or sign up. We, we won't do it through here, but I just wanted to sh show you. Uh, you check the website. And then um, let's see. Okay, so here's an example that we can see directly here. So in your web browser here, you can go to Instagram.com slash swc underscore news. This is just one off the top of my head. Uh, swc underscore news. This is the Instagram account of Southwestern College, the other college that I teach at. So a college is using Instagram to reach their student population, which is on social media. <coughs> let's check out the... Uh, let's check out their Instagram for a moment. SWC underscore news. <coughs> You're going to see that like most networks, like most networks, there isn't very much uh, branding that you can do. You'll have a spot for a logo. Again, it's going to be a round logo or a proportional one. So if you've got a company with a wide logo, it's going to get cropped. If you've got a company with a tall logo, it's going to get cropped. Almost all the networks nowadays, when you upload your logo, it's got to be some sort of square or circle shape. <coughs> they have their username of SWC News, which is the address. This is basically having that at symbol. They have the at symbol just like Twitter, at Victor, or at Victor's Bakery, at SWC underscore news. Stats that they've posted, 534, either photos or videos. Stories don't count in this because they're <coughs> temporary, right? They only last 24 hours, so this only counts the permanent posts or videos. They have 1,227 followers, and they are following 360. Just like the other networks, we can see who is following this account in the app when we do it on the device. Who is following this account? And we talked about the value of, of us spying on who is following an account, who is following our competitor. Because as we talked about before, we can then see what they're doing and try to connect with their followers, kind of poach their followers. In the app, we will also be able to see who is this account following. That's another way to get a little bit of competitor analysis and reconnaissance to see what our competitor is doing. Who are they following? What's valuable for them? Then there's a biography. Uh, it's also about 140 or 160 characters. It's got the keywords of the college. And what's this here? Hashtag. 
Instagram uses hashtags also, like Twitter. So this is an active link that connects every other picture or video on Instagram to each other. That's the purpose of a hashtag, remember? It's a keyword that is an active link that connects to other such photos or videos. The question was previously, where can I get a list of hashtags, or can I make my own hashtags? And I said previously on Twitter with hashtags, uh, don't really bother about trying to find a website about all of the hashtags, because your particular company or, or industry or whatever might not have a hashtag, uh, so it doesn't quite matter. And as for creating your own hashtags, you definitely can. The problem with creating your own hashtag is you need to have other people use your hashtag. If you're the only one inventing SWC POV and no one else uses it, it's not really that valuable to you. <laughs> but hopefully, so it says tag your shots with SWC POV. They're trying to do that. They're trying to get the ball rolling on that. I'm a student at the college. I take a photo of my A plus on my paper. I put it on Instagram and I hashtag it SWC POV. So I'm asking my followers to use my hashtag, and this is a common way to do it. This is one way to start to get your hashtag out there. In your biography, which people can see, mention your hashtag to try to get people to use your hashtag. So we'll say here, Instagram.com. Uh, you can visit the the site on a regular web browser, a regular computer, but you can't do very much. You can um, reply to people, comment, like photos, edit your biography, settings. Well, I said you can't do very much, and that sounds like a lot. What am I not saying here? Post. The main thing. You can't upload your photo. You can't upload your video. That's the main thing you want to do on a social network as a business. Share to the network. You cannot do that on the website. We can, of course, when we do the app. That's the point. But you can do these other things. You can reply to people and like their photos, but you can't really post. Unless you know the super secret trick, which I'll show you that trick in a little bit. So really, you need the app. You need the app from the App Store. So tip. Use the same hashtags that you use on Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus, etc. Um, just, just one moment. Use the same hashtags that you use on Twitter and, and all the other networks in Instagram. Mention it in your bio to get people to also use it. So. You can make up any hashtags, but if you don't promote them and get people to use it, then the hashtag is not quite working. So mention it in your biography. Question? Um, when I will do hashtags on Instagram, and then I'll do the same hashtags on Facebook, I notice that like the algorithm or whatever on Facebook, if I do a lot of hashtags, I get a lot less views. Mm -hmm. Like significant, like it will be, um, if I do a Facebook post and it's just a photo and maybe like a little sentence of something I want to say with no hashtags, I'll get like a hundred views and then if I put any hashtags, I notice it's like five views. Yes, unfortunately, we have to, you've seen it yourself and we have to say that. Yeah, Facebook really, the nicest way to say it, Facebook is a scam. Facebook is a network that used to be for people and now it's a network for businesses and the main business is the Facebook business so Facebook wants to make money off of us so guess what the way for you to get more views with your hashtags is to pay to get your content to be viewed by more people so um, it's true yeah you're gonna get less views on Facebook 
uh, unless you do it the way they want you to, and it usually is by paying. So either don't use the hashtags or pay to boost your post with your hashtags. That's just the way Facebook is. And they're the 800-pound gorilla. We're playing in their playground. We want to follow their rules. If we want to play in their playground, if we don't, we don't use Facebook. But we lose 2 billion people. So it's just there's no easy answer. Yeah, definitely it's it's rigged. Yes? Uh, on Instagram, if you go to the website, can we search to different people and different groups? We Is can. Any law if we cannot see that? We, we will see that there is the option for a public profile or a private profile. So when we search on Instagram, we can find people, but if they have chosen their account to be private, you can't see anything on it. You can just see their name, but you can't see their pictures. The default we'll see in Instagram is public. Anything that you create will automatically first be public, unless you go to the settings to make it private, and then anyone can, can see your stuff. But we can find that uh, the person or companies have website in Instagram that is private. Most will be public. People, regular people, usually set their account to, to private. But most businesses, they want customers. So it would not be a good idea for them to put it private. So most businesses that you'll search for will be, will be public. But we, just, we can just see that key. We cannot add anything, any comments. If it's private, there will be limitations. But if it's public, there, it, it, we will be able to add comments. And replies, yeah. On the desktop, not on the. On the desktop, yes. You don't join to the Instagram. Oh no, it, you for for being able to do any of these things about liking and commenting, like it tells me here follow, but I can't do any actions until I sign in. Because you, the note you said you can do it. Just yeah, after you sign in. Without signing, you cannot do anything. Exactly, you can just view. Just view. Sure. So, I was mentioning here, regarding hashtags, uh, you can put as many hashtags as you want. Uh, I, uh, I believe, technically, you can put up to 30 hashtags uh, on, a, on a post on Instagram. And on Twitter, you can put as many hashtags until you run out of space. And on Facebook, you can put as many hashtags, there's no really limit, and Google+. Plus. But uh, I would say uh, two to three hashtags per post. Uh, at the most. The problem with hashtags is the great idea for regular people is I want to put a hashtag on my picture because I want to connect with other people that are also interested in this topic. But that's a great idea that the spammers have also abused. I'm a spammer and I want to sell you some cheap merchandise. I'm going to put hashtags of what people are looking for. So I'm going to put 40 hashtags, 50 hashtags. If one hashtag helps me reach one person, 50 hashtags will help me reach 50 people the spammers think. And in the beginning that was true, until the networks then realized the spammers are abusing the hashtags. So putting too many hashtags hurts you. And to be safe, I would say you know, two to three. Um, that way it doesn't look like a spam message, and it's got enough of these keywords that hopefully get you found by the people that you want to find you. Yeah, because I used to use hashtags that said like like for like or follow yeah. for follow, and those aren't good anymore. They're not really good anymore because again, the network has grown so much that these things get abused, and uh, if that was a hashtag, like for like, I'll like your photo if you like my photo, but it's just really changed. So um, if the hashtag isn't working like it used to, it just doesn't work because it got abused. So you might have to use other hashtags or other means, such as boosting your posts. So just kind of browsing here, I see a lot of these photos. I see overall. Oh, I know this guy. I know this student. Oh, that's that's Nick. Uh, so I, I see overall that the college doesn't use the filters like traditionally was for Instagram. Um, maybe that's one, but most of these don't have that filter or different filters. They look like kind of a regular photo. Let me show an example of another one that does have more filters. Uh, question? No, go ahead. So you mean when you use this kind of filter, maybe you're going to put it in filter. 
here's an example of, of some photos with filters. So, um, PMD Interactive, our company. And yeah, it looks sad that we've only got two photos, but you know, you know what they say, uh, the cobbler's kids have no shoes. Okay. They're busy built, uh, making shoes for everyone else. Okay, well, we're busy making websites and running social media for other people. On our Instagram, we kind of haven't done too much. But our Facebook and our Twitter and all of that is active. Anyway, so here's a couple of photos that we have on our account, our business account. And these ones have filters. Okay, here's the filter. It looks kind of yellowish, blurry-ish. It's black and white, monochromatic. This is what I'm talking about, these filters. Uh, when I, a few years ago, when I was showing my dad Instagram, this brand new network Instagram, he says, why do the photos look so ugly? <laughs> I said, they, they, they're supposed to be that way. This is the cool thing. You want to be different. Because comparatively, all of these photos with the perfect color and the focus, though that's too common. Yeah, there's a segment of the population, of course, that will say, you know, this photo is better than this photo, simply because aesthetically, you know, it's kind of yellowish, it's maybe overexposed, the color, saturation, etc. And they want to see a nice sharp photo, and that's the only kind of photo. You've probably seen photos where, where it has a lot of blur in the background, like here, this would be an example. She would be in perfect focus, and everything else would be out of focus, or a lot, very blurry. Some people like that, because it focuses on the person, separating them from the background. Other people don't like that, like my dad. He wants every inch of the photo to be in perfect focus. But then, of course, it's simply aesthetics. Everyone has an opinion on art, and everyone is right, and everyone is wrong. But I would have preferred personally for these things to be a little more blurry, to have her more in focus and have that blurry to focus on her. I think it's a little distracting. Yeah, she's showing off that she builds these handmade ornaments, but the one in her hand I think is enough. The background is distracting. The building, the different colors, it's a little distracting. There's no right or wrong answer. You'll be able to do these photos as you want. But here's the user to to look at the photo because that's the message they're trying to do, like they used to do on TV when when they're uh, the commercials like like um, like the Vinny's commercial where there's a certain thing and they're be blurry but pay attention to that because it's yeah. totally gonna let you buy that next time around to see that they used to. You see it in commercials or you see it in movies a lot. Directors do it on purpose. There's three people in the shot but one person is in focus because they're the important one at the moment. Then the focus shifts. The focus goes from the person in the front to the person in the back because they were the brave one that raised their hand to stop something. So the focus changes to focus, you know, the focus changes to focus uh, on different things. Um, let me show another one over here. Uh, BMC Inc. Here's one that I'm going to show a little bit later. Uh, so this is one that I that I work on. Okay, this is more obvious with these filters. Okay, here's a stark black and white filter. Here's one that I'm saying again, which I shot right here in this room. There's my phone on the table. Look at how blurry that is. Again, my dad would say, why does that photo look so bad? It's, it's, it's out of focus. It's too dark. It's a bad photo. Why did you keep it? That was the purpose. I'm focusing on the phone here. And in the background, this is blurry. You can tell what it is, but it's blurry to focus on this. Look at that. The mouse again. Why is it not all in perfect focus? I didn't want that. I wanted the focus to be here, and then artistically, it's out of focus in other areas. So it moves your, uh, it moves your father to make a conversation about it. Yeah, but it'd be better if I have customers making a conversation about it. Here's a photo of, of my laptop. So again, taking a photo of the laptop, looking at a website, the color again, looks a certain way. Here's a black and white one. Just um, on this one, I'm, I'm, there's our building right there on the front. <laughs> and so square photo to focus there. When, when you have a wide photo like you normally take, you can see more. And it's very common. But then when you change it to a square photo and you try to take square photos, you don't have so much of that space. You have to think more about what you're focusing on in the square. Here's my cat, and so there's a mouse, technology, etc. So again, this one is an example, and then there's the obligatory food photos. And so uh, 
this breakfast doesn't look, now that I look at it again, doesn't look as appetizing. Mm -hmm. But it tasted good. It <laughs> made hungry. And that's good. Photos of books and then the remember when gas was four dollars. So uh, it's a close-up of the screen. I'm using this one here in this way of um, weird filters. And look at this. Some of these also, they're kind of moving away from this as well. Again, all of these networks are losing their character, which is annoying to me. They're losing their character. Look at the edge of this photo, which looks deliberately messy, like a classic photo that had a problem. I want that. This perfect, the perfect photos that we would get from Costco or Walgreens yeah. or whatever. Okay, great. That's a great family photo, but I'm trying to do something more artistic, so I want the edges to be weird. Look at this edge over here, too, this black border edge. Look at how this is cropped, etc. Look at the border there. That looks like a classic Polaroid. So this was the original culture and style of Instagram, and if I look at it, this is from 2012. So now, a more modern one, you know, it's a nice looking photo like every other network. Um, these are still wide, but it's showing it as a square. So again, like, what's the point nowadays? You, it's not you know, unique like it used to be. All of these photos, great photos, but, you know, it's a square, it's a rectangle like every other network. It's a great technical photo, nice and bright. But if you want to, you have the ability to do these filters, which we will see how it works when we get into the app. Some of these are videos. So if I play this one, I'm not going to play the sound, but it's a video. And again, you know, they're talking about uh, today, along with the local community, uh, announce the impact that local community colleges have on the economy. So it's, uh, here's one way to use the video. You have someone talking about a subject, and there's the, there's the video. Um, you can do also, we'll see how to do this. We'll see video like this. You can do um, a special effect on the video. There's a black and white filter on the video. I want to have a certain uh, style or uh, feeling in the video. So I put these different filters. You see the shots changed. I was looking at the students first, then looking at myself, then looking at my phone. We'll be able to do this. Um, so looking at the video of the video. And uh, here's another one. This one is um, just showing some coding probably talking about it also, 27 views. Mm -hmm. So that's all, that's all in real time? You don't have time to edit it when you upload it? Or is it exactly. Uh, at the moment, we will see that once we get into the app, at that moment you record the video, that's when you upload it. Okay. You don't really edit it very much. Yeah, like YouTube, on that one you should have a video ready to upload for YouTube. For Instagram and some of these other newer video networks, you make the video on the fly and then you upload it. Yeah, I don't have any examples of boomerangs here, um, but there's also this other kind. Um, it's not really a story, but there's a way also to have uh, a photo and um, multiple photos and one sort of like an album so three photos in one post so then eventually it probably has an official name but there's also a way to do albums share an album I think it's up to 10 photos in one post actually 10 uh, photos, uh, boomerangs, or videos in one post. That sounds exactly like a story, but what's the difference? It stays. It stays. The 24 hours, a story then goes away. An album, it stays there. And um, that's more permanent. The question about the hashtags, if you um, 
just do keywords like you're, you know, taking your paragraph, whatever, work, whatever you want to talk about. Is that just as effective as hashtags? Because you were saying you not use hashtags that much. So how do you really get people's attention? The one of uh, definitely Facebook is the one where where the hashtags could not help you very much quickly. Instagram, I did say two to three, but I often break the rules and do you know five, and it does work with. Instagram better to use more hashtags. It's the one definitely on Facebook because oftentimes if I post something for a client on Facebook, it can automatically go to Instagram. So on Facebook, I'm thinking of only putting like the two hashtags which go over to Instagram. But if you keep them separate, you know, on the Facebook, you can put one hashtag and then on Instagram, you could put four. So you could use the hashtag separately, or you could write the keywords in your regular description, but then they're not active links. If someone searches the hashtag cats, then posts with cats will appear, but not posts that just have the word cats in a description without a hashtag. So you see only the hashtags are what will give you results from search. Okay, but, but writing the word cats will still boost your no that's that's what I'm saying that not not really no it is um, if you want to get found if people are searching the hashtag is what will get you found not the word cats as a regular word mm -hmm. now as for kind of boosting invisibility and all of that that's part of a bigger answer of how many followers do you have already how active are you how else are you using the social network to further boost you up to get you found by more people but definitely when you use hashtags, your photo could be found, but not by the text being plain in the description. Okay. Yeah, because my question was more just um, getting higher up in, in the views, like not necessarily being found through a hashtag, but... That, that goes back to, yeah, how, how do you get found, uh, how do you get more views? That, that again goes back to the other ideas of the other networks, as in popularity breeds popularity. If I've got one follower, I'm not going to get that many views. If I've got 10 followers, I'm going to get more views. If I've got 100, I'm going to get more. As I'm active and someone likes my post, Instagram will tell the friends of the person that liked you, John liked that photo. So Instagram will help my photo get found by friends of friends. That's one way to also get more visibility. So as we get into the network, I'll go into these details. But yeah, it's like every other network. There's a whole there's a whole ball of wax to consider about how to get more views and followers. Question: uh, How you can add some information about the photos? Because on Instagram, many photos if you click here, mm -hmm. and something about the description. description. Yeah, we will be able to add descriptions once we share the photo in the app there will be a spot for us to add a description so we will see we can add this, this directly is not for all the photos some photos yeah for all your photos that you upload you can add any description but uh, but this is optional for you to add some description about the photos but it doesn't mean each photo has some description exactly you you have to add it uh, and it's optional. You, you, you don't have to put the description at all. It could just be the photo itself. But the point of putting the description... When you upload the photo, is, of you, is there any description or not? There is automatically no description. You have to write the description for Where? each photo. Where? I mean... Where in the app when we get to the app. So, the other thing now that you can share live so turn on your app to share live video to your followers that sounds exactly like what facebook, facebook live periscope uh, ustream twitch it sounds like all these other networks that also do the same thing. In the app, I turn on the button live, and then all my followers can watch me live. Again, this goes back to, well, how do I use it? What's the point, etc. All of these networks have that the two sides of the coin, as I've said before. There's the side of the personal and the frivolous, 
And then there's the side of the business and the professional, and they're both valid. I want to use Instagram to share what I had for breakfast to my friends and family. Great, have at it. It's there for you to use for free. I want to use, or I want to use Facebook as a business to show my company, to show my followers behind the scenes of my company, or to answer questions and answers in my real estate business. So two ways to use all of these aspects for personal or for professional, for fun or for serious, for frivolous or for business, and they're both valuable and valid and they both are available for you to use. How you use these, of course, that's always the challenge. And that's always the challenge to teach it for a whole room of a varied amount of people that have different goals. But these are the kinds of things that we can share. Again, we can't really do too much on the website. I, I would like to click a like on this photo. I really like it, so I'll click like. But then it's going to say, uh, in order for you to like, you have to sign in. Well, in order to sign in, I have to have an account. I can sign up through here, but then after that I can't do very much. All I can do is like. All I can do is comment. I can follow. But I can't do the important thing, which is share the photo, share the video, go live add the filters, all of that. We will do that in the app. Let's go ahead and set ourselves up in the app, in the device, to use it a little bit, then we'll, then we'll take a break. Uh, again, I'm going to show here on my screen uh, my, my device, uh, my device right here. Uh, if you don't have the app, you need to take a moment to go to your app store on your device. So either the iTunes app store, uh, the, the Google Play Store, the Windows Store, whatever, on your device, you have to go download the app. So I'll make a note here to really use Instagram. You need the app on your device. Find it in your App Store. So iTunes, Google Play, I've noticed that if people are on an iPad and you search for it, uh, it might not appear unless you tell it on iTunes, show me apps for iPad and iPhone. So if you can't find Instagram on your iPad, you need to search for also iPhone apps. <coughs> so find it in the App Store, install it, create an account, and then use it. So I've already got it installed on this device, but if I didn't have it, I'd have to go to the Google Play Store, so I'd have to launch Google Play in my case, maybe iTunes in your case. I would search Instagram. It would then install. Here's another thing that they've changed. In the beginning, the Instagram icon was a cool little classic Polaroid camera icon. And now it's this abstract kind of camera with a gradient. People are joking, oh, that's a photo of looking down on a plate of food with a drink on the side. But it's supposed to be a camera. So take a moment to find the Instagram app and install it. And then when you start the app, there will be a part if this is the first time using it, there's going to be probably we'll see it if it's the very first time using it. We'll see something like some sort of welcome screen. It asks you to um, choose a payment option in case you want to purchase something. Do you think it could be skipped over? Either it should be skipped over, that should be skipped over, that sort of sounds like it's the payment option for the Play Store, not for Instagram. Oh, so okay. just try to find a skip there. That's saying if you want to buy Angry Birds, for example. Oh. So f try to find that skip, but you should not have any sort of payment method for Instagram. So there's an Instagram screen. It will either have you log in with Facebook, log in with an account I've already created by an email or sign up. You can do either or and uh, honestly I personally 
when I log in, uh, I log in with the email and the password instead of Facebook. The problem is, for me, because I deal with various clients' websites, um, one thing that I don't think is quite worked out or ironed out is that I'm, I've got my personal Facebook and I've got the Facebook of my clients. So sometimes it gets confused and I might accidentally sign in with my client account instead of my account if I use Facebook sign in. So I would say to use uh, an email address to keep it separate. Uh, I won't go, well maybe I'll give it a try, but uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'll go through the sign up as if I have, if I, as if I'm trying to create a brand new account. You should see a button that says sign up, it doesn't even look like a button. These look like buttons, but that's a button there. Sign up. It will either ask for a phone number or an email. So if I switch to email, and I'm going to sign in with, and I'm going to sign up with some sort of email. Let's see if it'll let me make up a fake email. So one email address is tied to one Instagram account. If you want to create more than one Instagram account, you need more than one email account. It'll ask for a full name and a password. Full name, people get confused. So I, I put my name. No, you're going to put the full name of your business. So if I'm doing Victor's Bakery, I would type Victor's Bakery. making the notes here like most networks. Instagram, like Twitter, Facebook, etc. has a full name and a username. Not unique can have spaces, symbols, etc. And username is unique Not have spaces, symbols, underscore OK. So I'm uh, creating Victor's Bakery. Under the full name here, I can put Victor's Space Bakery. I can put apostrophe S, but I cannot use that in my username, which it will ask me for on a subsequent screen. So here it's asking me. Uh, for the username, so let's see here, then a password, there's also a spot for my logo up here, it doesn't look like it, but I can tap that um, to put a logo, I'll do it later, next, then create a username. So based on what I typed on the full name, it may then suggest that name. So here I was creating Victor Bakes. That's the username that it's suggesting. This is the one that um, it suggests that I go for. Well, I want Victor's Bakery. I, that means I cannot use the apostrophe, and it may have already been taken. So it will tell you if it's taken. If you're creating the account brand new, it may say, your contacts are periodically synced and stored on our server. To remove contacts, go to settings and disconnect. Or, which doesn't look like a button, but it is, continue without syncing contacts. The point of this, one of the reasons why, for example, Facebook and Instagram have grown so much in popularity, is because these default behaviors. I'm going to invite my friend, hey, get on Instagram. They're going to go through it. They're not going to notice this text. They're not going to notice this. They're going to click next. So Instagram, will. we're basically then giving permission to Instagram, yeah, look in my address book and look at all of the people that I'm connected to and then tell me who I'm also connected to on Instagram. Oops. So because uh, people are 
without really paying too much attention, allowing their contacts and such to be uploaded, people then get a notification. Your friend John just joined Instagram. Why don't you? Janet got on Instagram. Why don't you? And then people do it. So in my case, I'm going to go, I'm going to skip it. And anyway, this phone doesn't really have contacts. And that can be changed later. If, if you don't have the screen, of course, you can change this in the settings later. Again, find Facebook friends to follow. So the big old button says connect to Facebook, and most people will. They don't see that skip button. This is another thing that's saying, let us connect to your Facebook so we can see who you know on Facebook. And if they're on Instagram, you can connect. If they're not on Instagram, we will pester. I mean, we will suggest to them, why don't you get on Instagram? So I'm going to skip. Because again, thinking in terms of a business, it might not be too important for you to connect with your friends and family on your business accounts because you're trying to sell products and such, not be friends with your friends and family. Although you want to be friends with your customers because they're paying you. Instagram, and then of course it's going to say Instagram is more fun when you follow your friends. So it's going to tell you some, are you sure you don't want to connect with your friends? Are you sure you don't want to help us market to your friends? Skip. Profile photo. So if I've got a photo in my album on the phone, I can grab my company photo. If, I, if I'm at the business and I want to take a photo of the sign, I can do it. I'll skip it. Uh, but again, I would want to fill in the photo, fill in the biography on all my networks to get follows. And it would be easier to do those steps on the desktop. Yeah. And that's a lot. It is, yeah. So all I want to do for the moment, and we'll take a break, is either sign in to Instagram or sign up for Instagram. It's about 10.50. We'll take a break until 11. So we should have now the Instagram app on the device. I will show the trick, the secret, a little later to do some of this on the on the uh, website, on the on the desktop. But for the moment, we'll use the regular app. We'll be back at uh, eleven.